good cup of tea. How much we all took it for granted before the war. All of the embargoes and the events leading up to our quest for independency found us now without these luxuries we had so much grown to enjoy. <laughs> How soon we would see that they were of little importance as the war began and the efforts of our men. <laughs> I've long thought about those years of the war. In the 40 years that I have known at the general's side, those eight years were the greatest, for I was able to go and to be with him at every single one of our military camps. Indeed, before the war, I had never traveled north, never from Virginia, ever journeyed. Most people in the colonies never went far from where they were born. Indeed, we thought of ourselves as 13 separate countries in those years, but soon we would grow to think of ourselves as one united of states. All the way up to Boston I went and met there the soldiers in their camps. Never once during all those winters did I ever see any but bravery, but I saw great want as well. I always think of those years and I found this stocking that I had knit in those days. <laughs> they were always so short of supply, those poor men. It was all we ladies could do to keep our fingers going, to knit, to make shirts and stockings for them. Many people have asked me of the winter of the Valley of the Forge. Was it true, they ask, were the soldiers really barefooted in the snow? And I can tell you, yes, they were. Those brave men always lined my path when I came into camp. That year, the snow was so deep I had to be drawn in by a sleigh. But the soldiers had a ritual they called shouting Lady Washington in. I was the general's lady and they always shouted, God bless you, Lady Washington, for coming. God bless our soldiers, always and forever. All those years at the headquarters, I was in my homespun. I found this checkered apron recent, too. I had been wearing it when some ladies came to visit and expected the general's wife to be all done out in finery. And what they found was the general's lady, as they wrote, in her checkered apron, knitting away for the soldiers. When I would go out to nurse them, I always brought in my basket what I consider the most useful of all, more than even my medicines, my old book of common prayer. And I would read to them from the Psalms to give them comfort. It was then they began to refer to me as Lady Washington, the soldier's best friend, and that I will ever be. <laughs> Recently, he has decided to have a special award made for soldiers who have shown, as he has said, extraordinary bravery. And he asked me to work to stitch what he calls a badge of military merit. It is a heart in the color purple with merit across it to be awarded from henceforth for all time to those showing the greatest bravery and gallantry. But in my mind, they each one deserve this award of merit and I hope their bravery will never be forgotten by their countrymen. <laughs>